very good morning my dear students today we will start with the second module of second professional year that is on bioethics outcomes of this session will be understanding the principles of autonomy beneficence non maleficence justice and role of physician in healthcare system in context of bioethical issues so what is bioethics bioethics is the study of ethical issues emerging from advances in biology medicine and technology it purposes the discussion about moral discernment in society and it's is often related to medical policies and practices but also to a broader question as envi environment and well being bioethics is concerned with the eth ethical question that arises in relationship among life sciences biotechnology medicine politics law theology and philosophy it includes the study of values relating to primary care other branches of medicine ethics of the ordinary ethical education in sciences animal and environmental ethics application of moral principles to concrete medical dilemmas as said by sergeant shivdar bioethics is a very important area of Uh, medical sciences in our daily uh, medical practice or in research we come across many uh, dilemmas where we have to make a decision and these bioethical principles help us to take those difficult decisions many aspects of decision making in clinical scenarios for providing best medical care in routine practices in conditions like abortion euthanasia surrogacy health care allocation resources rationing similar situations for providing medical care in such conditions as a medical practitioners it is our duty to follow bioethics this ethics help us to decide what is right for the patient and allow the patient to decide for himself or herself the use of biotechnology for cloning genetic engineering alternation of dna which can affect further evolution or extension of life use of bioengineering and artificial intelligence similar decision making has a wider effect on the environment and planet or life form in general these decisions also needs to be taken very carefully and the bioethical principles also govern or you know help us to take such decisions or make such decisions so how does bioethics begin the national commission for the protection of human subjects of biomedical and behavioral research was initially established in 1974 to identify the basic ethical principles that should underlie the conduct of biomedical and behavioral research involving human subjects the fundamental principles announced in the belmont report in 1979 were respect for person beneficence and justice others have added non maleficence human dignity and sanctity to life in the list of the cardinal values medical ethics medical ethics is an applied air branch of ethics which analyzes the practice of clinical medicine and related scientific research medical ethics is based on set values that professionals can prefer in case of any confusion or conflict these values include respect for autonomy non maleficence beneficence and justice we will see each one of them individually starting with autonomy autos means self and nomos means rule right of an individual to self determination that means everyone has the uh, uh, freedom to decide for themselves respect for individuals ability to make informed decision about personal matters with freedom that is autonomy paternalism was, was the traditional uh, method in healthcare where the doctor defined what is the best for the patient now the patient's autonomy is important where the doctor's role is as a facilitator who only informs the patient regarding their condition and the possible outcome treatments and the pros and cons of all then the patient has a freedom to decide for themselves that is autonomy defining medical qualities in terms of outcome that are important to the patient and the family rather than medical profession that means we describe it with the consideration to the patient and their family and not merely by the positive medical outcome. autonomy is the ability of an individual to make a rational uninfluenced decision 
many terminal diseases are characterized by loss of autonomy in various manners and extent for example in old age dementia a chronic and progressive disease that attacks brain can induce memory loss and can decrease the rational thinking almost always resulting in loss of autonomy in such situation unless there is a clear advanced directive or a previous made uh, directive by the patients the person lacking mental capacity are treated according to their best interest it needs an assessment involving people who know the person best to what decision the person would have made had they not lost the capacity psychiatrist and psychologist may be involved in supporting the decision making this means if a person due to his illness has lost the ability to uh, autonomy then his near ones and dear ones who know them very well and the psychiatrist or psychologist and the operating doctor should take a decision uh, not what is best for the patient but what decision the patient might have taken if he or him were in their uh, scope of uh, taking their own decision this is very important because in old age in india there is no uh, will or there is no advanced directive given by the patients in such cases it is important to do what the patient would have done for himself after autonomy next come for non maleficence the concept of non maleficence is embodied in the phrase first do no harm or in latter or in latin it is primum non necessary many consider that should be the main or the primary consideration it is more important not to harm your patient than do them good which is a part of hippocratic oath that doctors take non maleficence the treatment was a success but the patient died because the importance is given to the treatment and not to the patient so it is more important that we should give importance to the patient treatment however it is also important to know how likely it is that your treatment will harm the patient prescribing a medicine or a treatment it is important to know how likely it is that the treatment will harm your patient before prescribing the medicine or treatment that are known to be harmful we should ensure that the patient understands the risk and benefit that the likely benefit outweigh the likely risks similarly the another uh, principle is beneficence actions that promote the well being of others actions taken that serve the best interest of the patients and their families many authors argue that healing sound healing should be the sole purpose of medicine and that endeavors like cosmetic surgery and euthanasia are several unethical and against hippocratic oath but beneficence is a concept in research ethics that states that researchers should have a welfare of the research participant as a goal of a clinical trial or the other research study the concept of medical professionals and researchers would always practice beneficence seems natural to most patient and research participant but in fact every health intervention or research intervention has potential to harm the recipient there are many different precedents in medicine and research for conducting a cost benefit analysis and judging whether a certain action would be a sufficient practice of beneficence and the extent to which the treatment are acceptable and unacceptable is is under debate when a researcher risk harm to willing volunteers to do research with the intent to develop knowledge which will better humanity this will be a practice of beneficence dual effect overlapping or combined effect of beneficence and non maleficence consequence of one can be contradicting to the other example use of analgesics in dying patients like morphine and nsaids relieve but effect relieve pain but affect respiration adversely hence shortens life so the beneficence is causing non maleficence many of such decisions are overlapping and contradicting so we need to exercise autonomy or evaluate the risk before proceeding with such procedure last one is justice the humans have a right the human right era started with the formation of united nations in 1945 which was charged with the promotion of human rights medical doctors have ethical duty to protect the human rights and human dignity of the patients most code of medical ethics now require respect for human rights of the patients justice 
Three different principles of justice in healthcare rationing decisions are commonly discussed in academic literature. They are need principle, maximizing principle, and egalitarian principle. Need principle requires that healthcare be distributed in proportion of the need. For example, in terms of immediate ill health, that means who needs the treatment most should get the treatment first. Second is maximizing principle. Requires that the health care be distributed so as to achieve maximum benefit. For example, in terms of population health, that means the people who will benefit the most from the treatment should get the treatment first. And finally, egalitarian principle requires the health care be distributed so as to reduce inequality. For example, in terms of lifetime health, if you see all these three principles cannot be individually fulfilled. You need to choose among them. If you want to give the treatment to the one who needs it the most, might be a terminally ill patient who might not benefit, whereas a patient who does not need it immediately, but the treatment when provided to him will provide the highest benefit. Hence, they will be of more benefit. So it should be given to them according to maximizing principle. And finally, there should not be any discrepancy among uh, the patients are there based on their illness and everyone should be uh, treated with inequality. That is a principle of egalitarian. So when you cannot take a single decision, we need to take a com combination principle. Combination principle dif uh, combines different principles together in a structured manner. One way to combine principle is for a secondary principle to come into operation when the primary principle does not yield a definite answer. Like if the two patients are having a similar need of the treatment, both are terminally ill, then we see which of the two will benefit the more from the treatment. Based on that second principle, we combine both first and second principle, then we decide who gets the treatment. A second way of combining principle is for two principles to be weighted together, neither having absolute priority over the other. Role of a physician in healthcare system. Although the physician has to uphold multiple roles in healthcare system, but in context of medical ethics, the responsibility of physicians are of prime importance. It is important to note that these four values are not ranked in order of importance or relevance and that they all encompass values pertaining to medical ethics. Role of a physician is, however, very conflicting. A conflict may arise leading to a need of hierarchy in the ethical system such that some moral element overrule others moral elements overrule others with the purpose of applying the best moral judgment to a difficult medical situation medical ethics is particularly relevant in decisions regarding involuntary treatment and involuntary commitment when the patient's autonomy is available and the patient is volunteering for the treatment then the medical ethics are fulfilled but if the patient is misinformed or the patient is not in a state to uh, be informed or taking a, a involuntary uh, involvement in the treatment, then the uh, burden of ethics lies on the physicians. There are many other uh, situations which will be covered in the f future modules. But just to sensitize you, the other places where medical ethics play a role is to avoid conflict of interest, like in case of referrals, in vendor relationships, in treatment of family members, in sexual misconducts. Also, obtaining informed content, consent is a very uh, important aspect of medical ethics. Next is maintaining confidentiality. In the current scenario of internet, the privacy and uh, publishing of your treatment, treatment results and revealing identity of the patients on internet has become very common. So, maintaining of confidentiality comes under the medical ethics and it is very important and it has to be followed by the doctor very strictly. Lastly, futility. Futility is a very important concept and further modules will be conducted on the same thing. So in the conclusion, I would like to say that there is a paradigm shift in providing healthcare services. Dynamically changing laws and expectations of the community are uh, making the physicians more aware and more responsible for the ethical principles that they follow. The responsibility of the physician to uphold the ethics in medicine is of very importance in the current scenario. 
Hippocratic oath that we take after our graduation is a very important document which helps us or facilitates us to uphold the medical ethics in our practices. So with this small lecture, I would like to conclude the introduction to bioethics, which will be later conducted in various parts in detail. Thank you for your patient listening. If you have any doubt, you can ask to me in the group. Thank you.